go. Yeah, yeah. When life hands you lemons, sometimes you don't need to make lemonade. You just compost it, you know? Yeah. All right. Uh, in 2009, we, we talked about this yesterday. In 2009, um, true story, right? MBHS closed its doors because of the swine flu outbreak. And uh, just for the sake of this problem, we had roughly, this was still when the freshmen were up here. We were like four grade levels on one campus. Um, there were about 2,200 students. We've grown quite a bit since then, right? Wow, okay. Um, but we closed its doors. The, 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 the swine flu spread, um, now this is kind of the made up. I kind of took the idea and, and came up with some numbers. So if we assume that the swine flu spreads according to this logistic equation, logistic equation that's us hello swan 59 has just arrived on campus if those students come to your class please allow them without any penalty again s of t equals 2200 divided by one plus 999 e to the negative 0.1 t power so when you see an equation like that the first thing i want you to be able to do is is recognize that and know that it's a logistic equation, okay? So what are the characteristics? Well, it has a name, this one's S. S is gonna represent the number of infected students. Hello, Giovanni. T is our independent variable, that is time. And uh, I think it says up here, or right down below here, S is the number of students and T is in days. So we do have units, but the characteristic here on the, on the right side is you have, you have your limit to growth in the numerator. Remember we said that yesterday. This is your upper horizontal asymptote at y equals, hello, Teresa. Yeah, yeah. And then you're gonna have in the bottom, one plus the number times e to a power. Okay, so what I want you to do now is go ahead and put this equation into your calculator under y equals and try to come up with, I think we did this yesterday, try to come up with a good viewing window or type in the viewing window that I gave you yesterday and I'll be right back. Okay, so let, let's, let's get it into the calculator together. Um, go to Y equals, right? Y'all have the color one, I, I don't. So uh, remember, it's important that you, you, that you learn where all the keystrokes are, where things are hidden on your calculator so that you can use them. So the horizontal division bar, you wanna use that as often as possible, okay? So y'all can get it by hitting alpha X out the green button and then one to the right, okay? Unless you have an older model like I do, then you can hit alpha y equals, which is your F1. And there it is, is number one. So everyone needs to know how to get that. Two, two, zero, zero down. And then one plus nine, nine, nine. Remember there's two places you can get E on your calculator. You can get E, the number, by hitting second division, okay? That gives you 2.718, the number. But, and then you could put a carrot if you want. But it's such a prominent, important number, it's the second function on the natural log because it ends up being its inverse when we say logs. You'll notice that. Um, so I just hit second LN. And of course, the calculator then automatically gives you the, the exponent. But it's not a big deal if you hit second division and then put your own carrot in there. Negative 0.1. And do I have to put alpha T? Do I have to put a T in here? No, the calculator doesn't really care what your variable on paper is. It could be anything on your paper, right? Z and Q, whatever. The calculator is going to use a Y and an X. You're the one who's in charge of, you know, keeping track of which one's which. All right. Now, again, we, we talked about this yesterday. If you hit Zoom 6, you know, the domain of this function is going to be all real numbers. Every logistic function has a domain of all real numbers. But we're using it as a model to help us figure out uh, how many students are affected. So it says down here that T equals zero is the day, the first day that the, that the flu was diagnosed. So for our relevant domain, we're gonna look at values of T that start at zero and go to the right. So we don't care about that tail. So what we wanna do is uh, come up with a window manually, manually. So your X min, X max, remember that's your T min, T max. What's a good T min or X min? Zero, yeah, I'll write it here like I did yesterday. Uh, T epsilon, we'll say, bracket, we're gonna start at zero. 
And then the upper bound, this is in days. And this is the one I said yesterday that you might have to play around with. How many days do you want to let go, um, let this, this flu spread? So I think we tried 30 at first yesterday. I'll just try it again. And now for your S, which is your Y on your calculator, this is the one that you absolutely know, right? This is the number of students infected. Can we have negative number of students? No. Can we have zero students? Yeah, so zero is a good lower bound. Now, what about the upper bound? How high is this graph gonna go, do we know? Yeah, that's where this number comes in. That's your limit to growth. That's the upper horizontal asymptote. So if you wanted to go right to the top of your screen, you could do 2200, okay? So these are the actual windows. We'll put X equals and Y equals. So, so when we write it like that, that's the same thing as saying, T min equals T max equals. It's just a mathematical way to do it. So now we'll put in a zero here, a 30 here. I turned my scales off. Yesterday we left it as one, but I, I always turn them off to zero. It doesn't need to put a tick mark. If you want it there, that's fine. And then zero to two, two, zero, zero. And I'll turn this one off. And then that's all you need to worry about. The resolution and all that, you just let it go. And now we'll hit graph. What we're looking for is that characteristic S curve. If we don't see an S curve, we're not gonna proceed and start answering questions because we may have typed it in wrong, okay? And if you're using the wrong equation to answer all the questions, I'm not gonna be very forgiving and say, oh, well, you know, it was right based upon the equation you had because I don't know what equation you had. I don't really see an S curve there, but I do see a little start of it, right? And so we need to go back to our window and we need to adjust this. We need to look further than 30 days. So I think yesterday I, I said, well, I, I wanna see the S curve. I can always come back, but uh, what, what, what can we do? Let's do 100 days. Yesterday I did 200 days, or did I? I don't remember, I 200. Yeah, let's let 100 days go. We don't wanna get too many people sick, do we? Let's go 100 days. So I'm gonna set the uh, X max to 100. And uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. all right, now that's looking better. I know now that I have the right equation. I'm starting to see that S curve, but I think what I want to do is I want it to kind of level out a little bit more at the top. So now I'm going to come back in and adjust it one more time. I may go out to 130, you know, 130 days. And that looks great. If you go out too far, like if I went out yesterday to 200, let's do 300. If you, if you give it too many days, you'll still see the S curve, right? And you might want to then trim some of those off. Now it looks like it's going horizontal at the top, but is it truly leveling out going horizontal? No, there's an asymptote up there, but remember your calculator uses the pixel resolution that, it, that it's programmed with or built with, and um, it, it can't continue to use um, have something increase. It's just a straight horizontal line. So that's where you come in. That's where you know it's not. So let me go back to where we had it, where it was a nice window. I forgot what a 130, is that what I said? Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, oh, I have it written there still. Yeah, good. And now we're like, oh, that's a nice looking S curve. Okay, that's a nice looking S curve. Now that we have the S curve identified, we can start answering the questions, okay? Here we go. You'll have uh, one question like this um, tomorrow or tonight. It's in the worksheet. And then we'll quiz on this tomorrow with the, with the calculator. It should be easy. All right. How many students are on campus originally that were infected? Okay. So remember, we, we've done this before. You have to show me what it is you're putting into the calculator. Notation is very important. So originally infected, that corresponds with what value T? Zero. So how are you going to communicate to me that you're plugging in a zero in for T into the function, into the calculator? What are we going to write? S of zero. Yes. I need to see S of zero. If I don't see S of zero, I, I'm going to play dumb and I, pretend I don't know where your number's coming from. And now, since we have that in our window, I don't have to do it from the home screen. Remember, the easier way to do it from the graphing screen if the X value is in your window, and it is, is just to hit trace and then type in a zero. 
don't scroll over to zero, just hit trace, type it over, and then you get 2.2 students, okay? Well, yeah, yeah, we always want to report, here's the thing, we always want to report three decimals unless it terminates before, like this one. Um, did it say to round to the nearest person? No, so um, I, would, I would say don't do that. You can, you can come up with a reasonable answer, right? So there were originally two students, right? We can't have a part of a student. Maybe that student was in the process of inhaling the virus, right? It was like in one nostril, but not the other, the two tenths of the way of getting infected. I don't know, right? But let's go ahead and just, unless it says to report the nearest whole person, let's get in the habit of always reporting decimals. Because even though we can't have a fraction of a person, we kind of know what 2.2 students means, right? Okay. Uh, and then there's another part at the end of day three. So now we're just going to do S of three. And we're still in trace mode. So we just hit three, enter. And we'll get 2.968 or 2.969. I don't care if you round or truncate. So almost three people, right? So if you want to kind of then interpret the numbers, you could say, okay, originally they were about two students or two students. And after three days, only one other person got infected. So it's not spreading very fast. What about the end of day 10? Well, S of 10, we'll write it and just still in the window, hit 10. So this, this is easy, right? This is the easy thing to do um, when you have the calculator, okay? It's just plug and chug, 5.970, okay? If you did choose to round, you would need to put that zero there because it's part of the accuracy of the number. That's why I'm a big fan of truncating, okay? So the, this is the data, and then you can interpret it. But um, again, it didn't say to round in the nearest whole person. Now, if you wanted to do it for a value that's off the window, just to remind you, go to second mode, right? Second mode, that clears, and you're on the home screen. You can access the function that's in Y1, right? The shortcut is alpha trace, alpha trace. That's something everybody should know. Alpha trace, my equation's in Y1. There it is. Open it up. Type in a, let's see, I went out to 130, right? So let's do like one, well, let, let's verify the 10 first. Close parentheses, that's the answer I just got. I don't really need to see it. Seeing it on the graph, that's like, ooh, cool, there it is, but, you know, data. But now I could do it for another value, like alpha trace. Let's let, um, let's let a whole year go by, just, just to see what happens. Let's let, it, let's let it be a leap year even, how about that? That would be at day what, 366. Okay, so 366 day, days later, if nothing is done, this assumes, again, no preventative measures, no shutdowns. Look at the calculator, it says. Yeah, within a year, everyone's going to be infected. Now, is this a true answer? Or is your calculator lying to you? It kind of is lying because we know that there's a horizontal asymptote at 2200. 20, Will the Y values, theoretically, according to the mathematical model, ever reach 2200? No. So think about the limitations of the model. In reality, if we, if we just walk around coughing on each other for a whole year and do nothing, everyone's going to get infected. There were 16 more infections yesterday of COVID with students yesterday on campus. 16. Yesterday in the United States alone, on my 25th wedding anniversary, 1 million Americans were infected yesterday. That's like the highest it's been in a long time. So they're saying now that uh, because everybody's getting it, even the vaccinated are getting it, even the unvaccinated are getting it, it might be, we might be close to ending this because we might start getting herd immunity. So many people are getting it now, symptomatically, whether they're vaccinated or not, we might all have herd immunity. So I don't know what the end's going to look like to what we're in right now, but that's at least hopeful that they're saying that. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we 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 closed it down long before it got through the whole school. So um, again, in theory, that last student 
will never get infected, right? It's never going to reach 2200. So you could like be coughing on that last guy for like a hundred years. You know, you're old people now. You like, you have the world's record for uh, being the oldest person alive. Two of y'all. One of you has it and the other one doesn't. You're still coughing on him. According to the mathematical model, he's never going to become fully infected, is it? That's not realistic because realistically it will reach. So again, models have their limitations. When you extrapolate outside the data, you got to be careful not to extrapolate outside the data too far. If you interpolate in between the data, that's a little bit safer, okay? All right. Um, so the calculator did lie to you there. It, it's it's, it's uh, so close to 2200, the calculator's nines, it's like 2199.9999999999. Sing with me. You don't know the tune. I'm just going, 9999999. Let's do the rap version. 9999999. There's so many nines. I don't even know if that's good rap. That's bad rap. That's Will Smith rap. Kind of no expletives, right? Has Will Smith ever cussed in a rap song? I don't know. Um, Will Smith was not part of NWA. Yesterday was trivia day. That's one piece of trivia one day late. After how many days have 10 students been infected? Okay, now this one is a little bit different because it's not the plug and chug variety. I'm not just handing you an input and saying, plug it in and give me the output. I'm giving you the output, right? And I'm asking you, what's the input? Now you could go and do trial and error, type in all kinds of numbers and see which one gets you close to 10, but the table? Okay, let's see what the table looks like. To get to the table, you hit uh, table, which is what? How do you get to the table, Brady? Second graph. Okay, there's the table. I go to the Y values and give me 10. Come on, 10. Big bucks, big bucks, 10, 10, 10. I want some 10s. All right, there you go. It's between day 15 and 16. So what did you write down, Brady? Did you put somewhere between 15 and 16? No, I just put day 15. Okay, okay. Uh, did it say to round to the nearest day? No. no. So you guys, how many decimals we need? Three at least. So what are we going to do if we look at the table? Up. Uh, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Now you can do trial and error. If you go to the table and you know it's between 15 and 16, you can start trace and type in 15.1, 15.2 and try and get it as close to 10 as you can. But that's just, that's, that's like trial and error, which is really last resort, right? We have a more efficient way to do that. Remember what we have to do? We have to show that we're setting the equation equal to that number. If you don't show that, you're not gonna get credit. Now, I'm just gonna use S of T and set that equal to 10 because I'm not gonna solve it algebraically. If you want to, you could write the whole thing, 2200 over one plus 999e to the negative 0.1t equals 10. But man, I have a writer's cramp already just from writing that, okay? I don't care which version of the function you set equal to 10, as long as you show me that you're setting the variable function equal to 10. I'm trying to think, Aiden, maybe it was you when we did this before previously, you found the answer or somebody did, and you already had the answer plugged in here. So whoever had like S of the actual answer equaling 10. That's not an untrue statement, but it doesn't kind of show the sequence of how you found it. So what I would prefer again, is you set the variable function, whether it's the name or the actual expression equal to the Y value that we're looking for. Now the one on the right is what we're gonna have to do if we were solving this algebraically. But to solve this algebraically, we need some skills that are gonna be taught in the next two sections. So that's why we're gonna do it graphically. So we're gonna stick with this right here. So now I have S of T equals 10. Well, what do we do then? How do we solve that? Remember you go to Y equals and you choose a different Y like Y2 and you graph 10. And let's see what happens. Graph it, you should see a point of intersection. Uh-oh, I didn't see it intersect, did you? No, is it still there though? Yeah, it's still there. What's happening again is your window is so large vertically that 10 doesn't even register pixel wise. It thinks it, it's, it's kind of the X axis, but it's there. If you wanna go in and kind of find it, you can. Here's what I mean. You could change your window from you know, 130, just change it to 13. 
And now you're kind of you're, you're kind of stretching it vertically. Uh oh, did that work? Did I do the right thing? Oh, I did X max. Sorry, I did the wrong thing. You could stretch this and instead of 2200, you could do 13. I changed the wrong one, right? It happened. Now I can see it intersect if you want to do that. But look, I'm going to go back to where I was. I'm going to go back to 2200 because I don't need to see the point of intersection. I know there's only one because the logistic function is one to one. All I have to do is know that the calculator knows that it's there. If, if I hit the trace button, watch this, Brady. If I hit the trace button, it shows me which equation I'm on. You can visualize it, but you can look at the top and you can see that you're on the logistic. If you toggle up or down, it'll say, hey, I'm sitting on the graph of y equals 10. So even though we can't see it, we know it's there. So we could just go second trace now from your graphing screen. Remember, second trace gets you to your calculate window. And which one do we want? Number five, right? Intersect. And now watch this. There's only two graphs. There's only one point of intersection. So all we have to do is hit enter, enter, enter. And if you want to click your heels again three times while you do it, enter, enter, enter. And now we're back in Kansas. 50, is this what you got, Bree? Uh, yeah, is that 50? 15.176. Okay, so let's say that this was my test. This was my quiz. This might be a free response on your next test, by the way, as well, not just a quiz tomorrow. I put S of T equals 10. That's a check. I got that check. And then I write this down as my answer. Am I getting full credit for this? No. No. What are these values? Are these the S values or T values? Those are T values. So you put S of T equals 10, and then underneath there, you put T equals and T equals. All right. Now, here's the other thing. In any type of application, you need to put units on your final answer. I didn't do that on the others up here. I should have. I put 2.2 students, and then I forgot to write students, students there. So I would have lost a point up here. Units are super important. They need to be on all your final answers. Okay. So this is T equals, yeah. S of 10? No, because it's not S of 10. What I was saying not to do is S of 15.176 equals 10. Okay, that's what I was saying. Some, some people did that. And that tells a story, but it doesn't tell how. It, it's not quite the sequence I'm looking for. So what I want to see is the variable function set equal to 10, the variable function. And then underneath there, it's almost like you're saying S of T equals 10 when. You can imagine the word when is there. You don't have to write when, but S of T equals 10 when T equals 15.176, and then we'll put days, okay? So that, that's what I want to see. I want to see the variables in action. Don't, don't overly condense it. Einstein said simplify as much as possible, but no simpler. If you write it uh, like the way I erased over here, that's too simple, okay? It, it shot, it, it, it doesn't disclose all the information that I'm looking for. All right. Now, should you should you be thorough and give two different answers? Should you do what I did here on your actual test or quiz? It's this or it's this. Should you do that? Should you always volunteer extra information? Never. Not on, not on these assessments, because if you volunteer extra information, it has to be right. It's, you're just giving yourself a higher burden of proof. So like if you put 15 point 176 days or T equals 15.177, and you forget to put days, you're going to lose the check now for units, right? Or if you did put days, but you, you rounded wrong or something, right? Uh, I had never learned how to round, so I'm going to guess eight, right? That's wrong now. That usually came up when we were doing like uh, limits, and some people put D and E or infinity, right? That's giving two answers. You don't want to do that. 
So if the answer was actually negative infinity, if that was the correct answer, you would have gotten credit for putting D and E. But then because you put or infinity, now that's the wrong type of infinity. Now you're gonna lose the check that you earned. So that's, that's kind of something I haven't really, I mean, I've talked about it, but you don't wanna volunteer extra information, right? Oh, and the Eiffel Tower is 1,000 feet tall. I don't, that has to be true. If you're gonna write that down, it has to be true. I'd have to go look it up and verify. I think it's actually only 999 feet tall. Can anyone verify that? Alexa, how, how, how tall is the Eiffel Tower? 1,063 feet. There you go. Is that okay? So if you wrote on there and the Eiffel Tower is 1,000 feet tall, I'd be like, I'm sorry, you're off by 63. Thank you, Tyler. Yes, Brady. You don't have to raise your hand to stretch. Just stretch. No, I know, but you don't have to ask permission. You don't have to raise your hand. Just like going to the bathroom. If you need to stretch, stretch. Don't, you don't need to ask. I don't, you, don't, you don't need to ask to stretch, Brady. Just stretch. Days. Okay. So that is the second way to use the calculator, right? It's not the plug and chug. It's the graphing and finding the point of intersection. Graphing and finding the point of intersection. Those are really the two things that we're going to do. The only thing that might be different is the way I kind of word things. So let's, let's take a look at some more words. Are we good so far? So far, so good? All right. After how many days is the flu spreading at the fastest rate? Oh, after how many days is the flu spreading at the fastest rate? Well, we already know it's fastest rate about the middle of it. About the middle of it. So we'll just write about the middle of it. It's, a, it's, about, it's, a, it's at about the middle of it, the fastest rate, not the middle of it. Not the middle. So about, emphasize about, not the middle. No. And then days. Got to put units. And. <laughs> Say what you mean and mean what you say. There is, I, I know that you're thinking and I appreciate the thoughts, but you really want to formulate a concise, meaningful argument that gives somebody some instructions that they could follow. I'm looking for what, first of all, after how many days? Am I looking for a T value or an S value? I want a T value. I want to know the time in T days that the flu is spreading at the fastest rate. We talked about the importance of the inflection point yesterday. The inflection point is not just where the curvature changes, it's not where the graph is the steepest, but all those things mean it's where the graph is increasing at the fastest rate. So I want to find essentially this value of t. Ah, uh, there you go, basically. I don't know this T value, but I do know that the Y value of the inflection point, the Y value of the inflection point is always at the midpoint of the horizontal asymptote. See, that would be formulating it in a better way. The Y value of the inflection value is always at the midpoint of the horizontal asymptotes. Well, we always have one at zero and the other one we know is at 2200. So what's the midpoint of 2200 and zero? It's just half of 2,200. Okay, there you go. So now we can say, ah, it turns into a question like B. I don't know the time value yet, but I do know that the flu is spreading the fastest when the function value equals half of 2,200. And if you just put 1,100 there, that's fine. I can infer that 1,100 is half of 2,200, okay? And now what can I do? How do I figure out the T value? It's the second verse to the same song that we just sung on part B. You remember the song we sung on part A? But I'm talking about the song we sung on part B. So instead of just putting a 10 here, I'll put a what? 11, zero, zero. And then I'll hit graph. And watch, it's gonna go ahead and graph the S curve again. And now, you can get yourself some visual pleasure out of this. The point of intersection should be the inflection point, is it? You can visually kind of tell if you're on the right track. To the left of that point of intersection, the graph is concave what? 
Up or down? It's up like a cup, part of a smile. And then to the right, it's concave what? Down like a frown. Yeah, that I, looks like I got it in the right spot. So now I'll just hit second trace number five. And then again, enter, enter, enter. Come on in, answer. And it's 69.067 days. Or if you truncated, I mean, that's what you get if you truncate. If you round, 69.068. I'm just going to keep truncating. And then don't forget your units. So for quizzing tomorrow, what am I going to expect to see? Uh, this, this, and then the units will be worth like one check for, for everything. If you have them all, you get a check. If you miss them any time on the final answer, you'll lose the one check only. And then you're inoculated against it, right? So if you just want to say, I ain't putting no units on anything, it's only going to cost you one check on the quiz. All right. Yeah, cool. Questions on that? It's the same question as part B, yes? But it requires you to know what Y value to set the function equal to. We're not rounding here. It doesn't say to round. Yeah. But if you want to know after how many days, that's an exact answer. If you want to interpret that now, what does that mean? That means that 69 days have already passed and we are already into the next day, right? So Brady, what you were saying is it actually occurs on the 70th day at about what time? Can we figure out what time? I like, you. Uh, let's do that. Let's, let's, let's write this. Let's, Brady has some good ideas. He's going to be a great teacher someday. Um, the flu, let's write it out. Let's write it out. The flu spreads the fastest. on day 70 at, and then what if I asked you to give me a, a clock time, either military clock or standard clock? I glad, man, Brady, that's awesome. Let's, let's answer that quick. That makes a good fault. I like that. Thank you, Brady. Let's do this. What I need to do now is go to the home screen, okay? So hit second mode. Flush, hit clear, flush. Now, if you hit X, enter, look what's there. It stored that value as X, right? It stored that value of X. I want to convert the decimal part, because I know it's 69 full days. I want to know what that fractional part of the next day is in clock time. Here's how you do it without losing any information. I pull the value up that the calculator found, which is the full decimal glory, and then I subtract the full amount from it. Notice what that does. It gets rid of the whole number part and more decimal appears. The calculator knows more decimals than it, than it shows. And now all I got to do, if that's part of a day, and I want to know how many hours that is, all I got to do is multiply that by what? How many hours in a day? 24. Multiply that by 24. And I'm going to write that down. That's the first hour on the 70th day. That's 1 a.m., right? Now I want to convert the decimal part from hours to minutos. So now I'll do the same thing, minus one, enter. Notice how I'm letting the calculator store all the numbers for me. And now I want to multiply that by what? How many minutes in an hour? 60, boom. So that's 1.37 a.m. And it's, you want to figure out seconds, let's do that. Subtract the whole number, 37. Boom, there's the fraction of a minute. How many seconds in a minuto? 60 again, times 60, and it's 16 seconds. And then, would you want to go to nanoseconds? I don't know. I think this would be fine. So at 137, 16, and I'm going to put AM. Why would I want to put AM? There's, yeah, a broken clock is right twice a day. Right. Okay, I love that question. In fact, I think I will add that to your quiz. I didn't add it to your, your, your worksheet. It's not on the worksheet. The worksheet is, uh, have any, has anyone started the worksheet yet? You have, okay. Um, so I'm not gonna go in there and change it, but you might, wanna, you might wanna answer this question on the worksheet. So fantastic, thank you, thank you. Well done. Any questions on that?
It saves as X, go to the home screen, hit X, enter. It's there. And then just subtract the whole part times. Yes, sir. Are you stretching? No. Okay. Oh, because if it's spreading the fastest at day 69.067, that means 69 full days have passed. If 69 days have passed, the next tick of the clock lands on which day? The next day, which will be the 70th day. So that's what Brady was saying. Even though it's 69.067, if you're interpreting it as on which day, you have to round up. That's what you meant, right, Brady? Yeah, see, you have to round up if you're talking about which day. If I don't ask you on, um, if I don't tell you to round, you could just tell me on day 69.067. I'll accept that as a numeric answer. Writing a sentence though, interpreting it in terms of clock time, that's, that's the pre-AP thing, that's the honors question. I should have had that in there before. I try to go back and kind of revisit my questions and add and enhance them throughout the, you know, the years. Um, and I'll add this one. This is a good one. Okay, um, we're almost done. According to the model, after how many days will the entire student population become infected? According to the model, will the student body ever become fully infected? Never, okay. And then why? Um, S of T has a HA, at y equals 2200. That's all you have to say. That's according to the model. Don't say it has an HA. Don't use pronouns, it. Because I don't know what it is. There's a lot of things we've been talking about, it. And now here's the last one, okay? If the school policy is to shut down when at least 5% get infected, after how many days will the school shut down? Yeah, I need to figure out what 5% of the student population is, right? So what's 5% of 2,200? Yeah, this, is, this means multiply, right? Of means multiply. So that's really just 0 0.05 times 2,200. So let's do that first. We're on the home screen, 0 0.05. Turn it on, turn it on. Yeah, baby. 0 0.05 times 2,200. So that gives us uh, 110 students. So if at least 110 get infected, the school's shutting down. Well, now I have a what value? Is 110 uh, a student value or a day value? It's a student value. You don't have to put students there because that's not your final answer. But now you say S of T equals 110 and then T equals, and now we go back to where we were. And instead of 1100, we just type in 110, okay? And we hit graph and uh, we'll get it in the nick of time. Here comes the new graph. Well, now we can see it intersect, but it only intersects once. So once again, second trace number five, click, 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 right? Enter, enter, enter. 39.62, I can't even read that. 623, is it 623? You might wanna put your Y min, Y max to have buffers there, okay? And then you could just leave that as three decimal days, unless I ask you to convert it to clock days. It would be on the 40th day, close to midnight, right? Close to midnight. Swine flu is lurking in the dark. Hey, be safe out there because COVID's real. Y'all have a great day. Uh, worksheets due tomorrow. We'll have a quiz like this tomorrow with the calculator. I'll be here in the morning if you have any, any questions. Have a great day.